Hello, good evening, and welcome to Our Planet Radio Live. I'm Randy Morgans, and uh, wow, have we got a show for you tonight. This is going to be rip your head off and uh, drain your brain of any preconceived notions about uh, the reality that you live in, because... Um, we pretty consistently blow the top off of things, and uh, <laughs> it's not by design. It's just simply the place where we look. How you doing tonight? It is uh, Wednesday night, uh, April 24th, 2013, Off Planet Radio Live at offplanetradio.net, offplanetradio.com. And uh, it's been a pretty interesting period of time as well. Um, the fallout from the... Uh, the Boston incident, the Boston Marathon bombing, has continued to recoil throughout the United States in some pretty interesting ways. Um, don't get distracted by even what the alternative media is pointing you to. There's a lot of misdirection out there right now in terms of um, information that's being pipelined. Uh, I'll just point out one culprit right now. Alex Jones put out a video pointing to a Family Guy TV show that was basically chopped up and made to look like it was doing some type of predictive programming. I saw the whole video. There's no there there. This does not serve the purpose of truth at all, and a lot of the alternative media simply serves as a means to redirect your attention from the basic facts. The mainstream press will not answer Answer the, ask the questions. They're not going to get answers either. They're not going to ask the question about why in the hell the Boston Bomb Squad was holding an exercise that day, why there was a deployment of Bomb Squad dogs and agents on the scene at the marathon. Um, it would seem to indicate there was notice given about this event, and yet they didn't bother to clear the area. So the original story, as always, just even going back to like 9-11, you have to go back and look at the original incidents and ask the right questions because everything's been prepositioned and a lot of times the story that you get from the media is being scrambled and put together in ways to confuse you from the original conversation. If they had boots on the ground, they had tons of federal agents there, why wasn't that area cleared? Simple answer, there's an agenda here. Uh, were the two Russian so-called um, sleeper cell agents real? We're never going to know because one of them's dead and the other one can't talk. Um, go back and ask the question again. Can they protect you? Do they want to protect you or do they want to continue to escalate the agenda to take away your rights, to take away your freedoms, to ban firearms, and to basically turn your city into a military police state? Those are the questions that need to be asked and they have to be based on the right information. And so you have to go back to the most basic facts and don't get caught up in the dogleg that the media and the alternative media as well is feeding you. Next week, uh, we will have um, Oxford-trained um, philosopher and author researcher Chris Carter here. Science and the Afterlife Experience. Chris has appeared on the show before. Um, he is earnestly contending for the research that demonstrates um, the existence of afterlife. He's fighting against skeptics out there who basically using science have continued to control the thought patterns of people and militate against over 150 years of research into the phenomena of afterlife experience. So that will be next week, May 1st, Chris Carter's Science in the Afterlife. My guest tonight is probably one of the deepest, most interesting people that I've had just a very short time to talk to, but I can tell you again that the information that he's going to present tonight will change your paradigms. He comes from the UK. He describes himself as a psychic, Jason Bourne, and he has had a lifetime of experience, and he continues to contend for finding out exactly what it is that's going on somewhere out there or somewhere inside of here. My guest is Tony Topping. Tony, welcome to Off Planet Radio Live. 
Oh, good evening. Thank you for that very nice uh, introduction, Randy. That's uh, very good of you to say all that. Very nice of you to say so. And it is all about um, looking at for what the cause is of all this and why it happened, uh, which, I'm, which is still an, on, uh, an ongoing thing with the events that happened to me. Let's start at the beginning with that a little bit, Tony, because you uh, you have some pretty distinct memories going back very early in life. And whenever somebody tells me that, uh, I feel a ring of truth. You know, I, I had somebody tell me one time, how do people remember events that happened to them as small children, three, four, or five years old? Most children don't have memories that far back. It seems paranormal experiencers do have very intense childhood memories. What are your earliest memories, your earliest experiences? Well, I, I think my earliest experiences were uh, were to do with waking, were to do with before going to sleep, seeing uh, I was a child of two years of age and seeing something walk through a wall and it was um, it was it was absolutely unbelievable because I can see it now to this day my father looking at me and going there's nothing wrong with the uh, with the wall don't worry about it that you didn't see anything I'm only three and I can remember him say all this uh, I can remember him trying to calm me down and put me in a cot um, I can remember him uh, doing all that and I remember it very vividly I remember just uh, for some reason I bit my own lip and started to bleed as well because I was that frightened with what I saw, these two people just walked through a wall, um, and it was very, it was very interesting. What was that? And I, I remember it, I vivid memories of that happening. And, and and obviously, you know, I was recently on an ITV program in the UK called This Morning, and we have a skeptic in the UK called Dr. Chris French, mm-hmm. uh, who indicated that that incident was actually due to sleep paralysis, and we should be very aware. Uh, very wary of anybody like myself who would who would come out of these experiences. It's a form of brain epilepsy. Uh, but I remember it very well. What happened to me? And it, it was, you know, it's about seven years of age as well. I had my first UFO really coming over the coming over the house. Um, I've been tracked for a very long time. It's been absolutely unbelievable. Probably from about 1972, I would think I've been watched carefully and monitored by an unseen hand, knowing what I was and who I was. The last person to know all this is of course me um, you know I, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the last person Randy so what happens is it's a game of cards uh, and I uh, I hold the supreme cards uh, nobody else is telling me this and I can't see them and nobody else is telling me but they can see what I'm holding in my hands but nobody's telling me uh, and it's very underhanded and very devious what, uh, what goes on and I think also nothing, absolutely nothing at all what you might read uh, in the mainstream internet or from some of these researchers uh, even Whitley Stryber and such like bears any resemblance at all to real life and what goes on with UFOs and indeed the as Wilbert Smith the Canadian UFO researcher um, he was uh, he, he was approached by the Canadian and uh, no the American government I think it was on the Canadian government who according to his wife one of the things they said to him was that there is a mental component to the UFO phenomena and for me this is where it's at there is a mental component to it it's definitely not a delusion and as far as I'm concerned it, it bears no resemblance to anything that's written uh, written about uh, in it and along the way I've had trials and tribulations, vicious psychic attacks. It's been hell. I've been to hell and back with it. It's not been easy um, at all. Uh, unethical is, uh, you know, unethical. Uh, anybody who thinks that you're a transcended master as a light being come here to save the world, it's not, <laughs> it's not happening, mate. It's just, it's just real life. It bears no, no resemblance whatsoever um, to what really, sorry, uh, the, what is written, as I say, bears no resemblance to what really goes on. Unbelievable. You hit on something there, um, about the whole ascended master thing and this cult that's grown up yeah. around uh, what we would, what we, I guess we call contact or uh, yes. disclosure, a term that yeah. I really have come to despise. Yes. Um, and there's all these expectations. First off, first contact, I, where in history would you even point to first contact? As far as I'm concerned, it's probably beyond any possible human memory at this point. Um, going back to your earliest experiences, do you have the sense that in some way you were being, the classic term would be abducted, contacted, what type of experiences did you have that were um, 
go, went along with your initial contact experiences? Well, at that early age, uh, Randy, I was being awoken from sleep at the age of seven, at the age of ten, at the age of eleven, uh, and I couldn't define that they were contact experiences. They were something, mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't define what they were. And as a child, as I would fall asleep, I'd have people. Uh, all I could describe them is people just looking down at me. Uh, it was very odd in the in the dark. Uh, it was it was very odd. I, I, I've often thought that maybe I don't see normally in the dark compared to other people. It's all. Oh, a bit odd. that's an interesting break. Right yeah, yeah, that's yeah, real yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's it's like I see like the, when I see in the dark, I see like a television screen of dots in front of me, uh, and it was it was because and I remember it quite vividly as a child. People looking looking down at me, and I used to say, "Oh, mummy, I've got or you know, oh, auntie, I've got heads looking down at me when I sleep. They're looking over me." And she'd go, "Oh, that's because you're psychic," uh, you know. And my father, who who I uh, who I came to despise, um, tra it was all tragic what happened there. He was supremely psychic and. And he would. Um, I wouldn't actually call myself psychic. I would call myself just an, uh, somebody who's, who's had extreme paranormal experiences, really. Uh, but, but, but there again, we'll go into all this about being psychic and the consequences. Uh, but my father, he would. Um, he would certainly put me on the bed if I was naughty with a headache. Uh, he certainly would, and uh, he'd knock me out cold on the um, on the bed with the power of his mind. He'd just put. I mean, I've seen him cure cure neuralgia. I've seen him bring a cat back from the dead. I've seen. Him revive somebody of a heart attack with the laying of his hands, but he was a very difficult man, uh, a very difficult man to deal with. What um, was his? Yeah. What was his? What was his background? Did he have, um, for instance, military background or anything like that? Well, it, it, it's odd. It, it's very odd. You could say that because I wanted to see his service record because he used to. He, he kept telling me mm -hmm. that there was uh, that there was things he did that he, he kept quiet about. But according to him, he was a corporal in the uh, in the army. Uh, he became a baker. But he, he, he tells me this story of this bizarre approach made to him by the KGB in Austria, uh, and he was warned off by his commanding officer about it all. All very odd, uh, but basically. I never got to the bottom of it, but that's that's what he was uh, told. But, but yes, he was in the military, but he had a mental breakdown and he left. Uh, he, he left the military. But one of the things that happened in our family, there was a family incident uh, whereby my mother was in serious trouble with an employer. And uh, I remember this particular day, this particular night, coming back with my father and my father just saying, I hope the place burns down. And I remember him sat in the living room, closing his eyes, and the boiler room blew up in the place he was talking about. Huge fire. Um, luckily, there was nobody in the building when it happened. Uh, but he, I remember him distinctly doing that, um, he closing his eyes and um, the whole bloody place, uh, the place in town, where, you know, in the, the other side of town, just going up. Uh, the boiler room exploded, major fire in the premises. It was it was horrendous, um, and so you know I've seen him I've seen him do all this, and I as a young man entered into the occult. Uh, at this point in time, in reference to your question, there's no sign of any contact with any form of aliens or any form of UFOs. Okay. No sign of it. It's just this bizarre kind of uh, difficult child or difficult teenage years, uh, dabbling in the occult, being woken up to strange laughter. I'll never forget that. You know, when I was twelve, the demonic. Uh, uh, demonic laughter waking me um, you never forget that never ever do you do you forget that and mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was absolutely unbelievable what, what happened there as a, as a child trying to comprehend this and as adults trying to comprehend it uh, it's caused me much trouble I'm now in my forties and I'm suffering quite you know I, I've actually it would I would be a lie to say that I'm not suffering mentally from it all because I have done it's been a hell of a roller coaster ride um, for example only last week uh, I'll give you an example of a typical psychic attack attack using this kind of technology uh, only last week I was attacked around about 2.30 in the morning actually when I was asleep and what happens is Randy is that well, whoever they are will switch your brain as if you're in a past memory uh, but as it's as if it's as clear as if you are alive sat here now and I, I remember this quite well uh, and I'm, sat, I'm kind of like 8 years of age again back in my old house uh, in my old bed it's as real as if I'm sat here now but it's artificially generated and the next minute I know Oh, I just get these horrendous attacks to the throat in the form of, believe it or not, in the form of knives coming at you. So you imagine that suddenly mm -hmm. you, you change mm -hmm. to this scene of knives coming at you at your throat, and I woke up with a very with, with a very painful throat. But whatever it is, an unseen hand once again pulls me away from the situation. And it's very 
interesting. What what is it? I don't know whether we can go into that now or later, but that's probably to do with the, the mental component of UFOs and the equivalent of uh, some type of like well, a movie well, inception. Let me back you up a little bit there. Yeah. Because you just hinted at something that I find interesting. And I'm working off of a composite of a lot of people that I've interviewed and talked to, you know, over the last few years. And one of the things that a lot of people report is, yes, there's horrendous experiences, there's horrible consequences psychically, emotionally, physically, but there's also seems to be a protective aspect to this as well. How would you categorize that? I, I would categorize that in the line of uh, Reese, in the line of Dr. Carla Turner. I don't know whether you're familiar uh-huh. with I'm her. Very familiar uh, with her. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, when she came out with this little sentence that said that she concluded, and I concluded as well, uh, a bit similar to the work of Rupert Sheldrake, that at some level, uh, in a way that we don't comprehend, the human. Uh, species and biology is changing so that it can challenge this reality that is hidden from us <laughs> uh, and yeah. it seems to be a biological function not just a not just a, a dismissive uh, brain pa- epilepsy or anything like that this appears to be a, a, a biological function that it seems to be uh, actually guiding um, guiding us and I'd go as far as to say Randy I'm very familiar with India and their UFO research and they have this I'm, I must convinced they had a think tank in India leaking stuff to their own press just leaking it out because it was nothing the UFO data was nothing compared to what's read about in the western media in fact it was it's a very poor standard in the west but the some bizarre think tank in India that had looked at all this and UFOs and all that kind of thing concluded that we possibly the possibility that we are a type 5 intelligence in other words we are a projection of something else that is of, of higher form and we're very rare we're very rare hence some of us having this uh, kind of um, these strange carries on and so in the uh, in the environment I talk about there's a distinct possibility that some of us have been left with a calling card that says type 5 was here and everything else that's a bit lower down the pecking order comes a running to take a look hence all the strange goings on and all the carry on that it's taken years to 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 reach these conclusions however bizarre but it's part of the the understanding of it uh that, that it seems to be yeah. no you actually have put a, a a classification on something that i've been talking about for quite a long time yeah. i'm of the opinion based on the phenomenon studying it both in the current era but even going back historically that there's something extremely fascinating to other beings about the human race yeah. and specifically yeah. about certain strata of the human yeah. race yeah yeah Yes, yeah, so this is this is absolutely correct, and I, I have a reason to believe that in some in some cases some of us are, are human beings, but our, our souls, our, our biophysical bodies, uh, the the realm that projects into this mental component is slightly different from other human beings. Hence, as being hence as being hit by all this paranormal activity, the UFOs coming over, this, that, and the other. It's all very uh, it's all very drip, drip, drip. It's all very they keep the distance. Uh, they don't tell you the full story these people behind the UFOs and what's going on but it, it makes sense it certainly makes sense that that's probably what has been going on and is going on at the moment it seems to make sense uh, from my uh, from my point of view and I could be wrong and I'm open to all suggestions uh, as to what it, what it could be but this seems to be where it's at at the, um, at the moment it explains a, uh, a hell of a lot it really does now, growing up and having these experiences, and I know you said you didn't really, at that time, consider yourself psychic per se. Were you having psychic experiences? Were you, for instance, having extrasensory perceptive experiences or clairvoyance or anything like that along with these initial experiences, Tony? Now, it looks... Did we lose him? <laughs> Uh, looks like we did. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, let me pull Tony back in or see if he'll call back in. Let me throw up some music here. I'm not surprised by this. I was expecting this was going to be kind of difficult show tonight. So hang in there for a few minutes. Let's see if we can get our guest back. Okay, and we're back. We have our guest back up on the line. Tony, welcome back. 
So yeah, well, we'll come back. Right, I think that's typical of what of what happens, uh, isn't it? Really, just just typical of, of what happens with it being me. You're interviewing maybe. Uh, so I think we were talking about childhood, weren't we, and psychic experiences? Yes, yes, that, exactly. Is that correct? Thank you. Uh, there was a lot of you know a lot of it wasn't so much psychic experience, but it was intense dreams of nuclear war and uh, uh, you know my, my my childhood dreams were dominated with all that with with, with nuclear war. I used to wake up crying uh, with these horrendous visions of it, um, and, and it was just it was. Just just really, really odd. Uh, I can't really um, recall any um, any psychic psychic experiences until about ninety one, ninety six, probably ninety seven, uh, when it really started uh, kicking in. Uh, when I started larking around uh, with it all, and it's uh, you know it just it was just, it, that's when it really happened. All the all the psychic experiences started going on there really. Uh, but in childhood and in teenage years, I had a very difficult time. You know, it wasn't it wasn't easy i do i do remember casting a love spell on somebody and that backfiring on me you know so it um it really was i suppose 91 when when my first ufo incident happened and it came in over the house like something out of close encounters uh, for about a split second and then disappeared and i was left wondering what was um what was going on uh, and that was in 91 you know so and then i went to drama school in 96 uh, sorry 91 i went to drama school sorry uh, shortly afterwards and nothing really happened and then either so you see there's nothing really happening uh, really apart from the, the fact that you know my father was psychic I was having strange dreams and I was having strange goings on as well that I just um, that I just couldn't understand uh, and this would later on develop into one hell of a, uh, a roller coaster ride in the years ahead for me now you've indicated to me uh, that uh, along with these experiences, you've caught the attention of, um, let us just say, v uh, very interested government types. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. When yeah. did that begin to show up? It began to show up... Uh probably earlier than I would probably know but it began to show up uh, I'd give you the precise date on the 17th of the 5th 1999 all hell broke loose uh, when we had a I had a UFO come in over the um, over the garden and illuminate a television antenna and fly back off again uh, whoever the people who are monitoring me knew all this was going to happen before I did and I was filmed by an unmarked uh, helicopter as well and uh, that was a very bizarre incident he broke every air regulation in the book uh, and it was a green and mark thing we had it analyzed uh, by Jane's defense weekly it's a special forces military helicopter that is not used by British forces it's used by US forces mm -hmm, they're bristling mm -hmm. bristling with camera gear and it's a winch winch variant sliding door AS 550 which I understand was a very is a very rare helicopter indeed in, in that configuration from what a Lynx helicopter pilot was saying he'd never seen anything like it uh, and then the phone calls started coming um, you know, telling me to shut up, uh, keep quiet, this, that, and the other. And all because this UFO had come in over my house, illuminated a TV antenna, and flew off again. We had that analyzed, and the guy who analyzed that was a special effects director, and he also concluded that it was a UFO. Um, and it, it, was, it was very interesting indeed. Whoever whoever they were, and I think I know who they are, uh, had a specific purpose. They came in on intentionally, they illuminated the antenna intentionally, and flew off again knew in exactly what they were doing because these people in the UFOs they don't do anything by halves they uh, they don't just come in for tea and there's always a driven reason as to what they are uh, what they are doing and so I started getting followed as well which was very bizarre um, and I started getting uh, attacked by an advanced form of technology uh, that will be called psychotronic uh, I'm curious as it's to, as it's to its delivery system uh, but definitely I would be awoken at 2 3 in the morning by the most horrendous screaming noises, gunfire in the head, um, anything, you know, you name it, it happened, it was horrendous, including defecating the bed as well, uh, feelings of doing that, but you just couldn't believe it, Randy, you just wouldn't believe mm -hmm. it, and, uh, well, you probably would, actually, a man like you, you probably would, with all the research you've done, um, and, you know, it, uh, it was horrendous, and, 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 and so you've got this, situ this bizarre situation where you sat in a pub with your friends, and uh, it was quite odd, because I was continuing continually dreaming about a particular man who um, who kept who was possibly responsible for all this um, and I kept dreaming about him and it was very very odd and uh, he looks like an actor that is called Nestor 
Carbonell, uh, although Mr. Carbonell has absolutely nothing to do with this whatsoever. It's just a, but he, if you get, that's what he looked like, mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. man. And uh, so we're sat in the. Uh, we, I'm, I'm with the pub in some friends, and in he wanders. This man in he wanders with his sidekick, a female sidekick, um, and this has very worrying ethical implications as to what is going on, uh, because this goon squad turn up in a pub and they always they always carry vehicle keys with them. Always in a vehicle. He had vehicle <laughs> keys on him. Uh -huh, he had a vehicle uh -huh. key on him. And uh, I remember he, he ordered a Coke with a smile, with his sidekick, and then uh, they leaned back against a wall that had a mirror on it and just observed me. And I knew what was going on, and they knew what was going on. My friends around me were completely oblivious. And then I walked past him, and he mentioned to his sidekick what I was doing, and mentioned what he was doing uh, in the mind control harassment situation that was in, and only he would know that, Randy. Only he would know that remark that he made. He would only know that in reference to what he was, what was going on. Uh, so a guy in a pub randomly makes a remark uh, that only you would know um, in reference to going on. You know you're being followed, right, and then right. his sidekick, then his sidekick, kind of like uh, steps stepped back as I came back from the toilet he stepped the sidekick stepped back he was a female lady uh, and leaned back into the mirror and said to him why isn't Tony talking to us and his reply was I don't know this in the pub oblivious to uh, you know to all this and then next minute um, he realised that I wasn't responding and then in the next in the next minute he then just said come on let's go and disappeared what would have happened had I met him, what was he after? Why was he there? Why did he come to the pub? He was after something. He was in driving distance in a vehicle of that pub. He didn't travel far either. Uh, this all leads. This all leads to some very unethical and strange goings on by an agency that is unaccountable to the parliamentary process in our country, and certainly unaccountable to um, to your process. Uh, you know, in, in your country as well. Well, uh, and, and yeah. the issue is too, Tony, and you probably know is I've gotten information that the United States has maintained bases, specifically the NSA, uh, through the military in Great Britain since after World War II. Yes. Um, I don't know if you know who Barry King is, but okay. I've interviewed Barry King a number of times and talked to Barry extensively. And, of course, he's talked quite a bit about what goes on at the base called Peacemore, which was, in fact, a, a U.S. military ins installation where, according to Barry's testimony, not only was there secret projects going on, mind control operations, but also the presence of reptilians on the base. Yes. Yeah, indeed. And if you if you look at that with the reptilian uh, issue, there's that there's that famous thing, Randy, to famous interview to do with David Icke and Jesse Ventura. Mm -hmm. um, now I don't know when he, when David Icke is not a fan of he's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, I know this, and I know that uh, I think you you've definitely looked at his research. Uh, but what is interesting is his reptilian research, and it's quite interesting. And Jesse Ventura asked all the wrong questions, and Mr. Icke gave him all the wrong yeah, answers. Yeah. Uh, because because from a you know from a espionage point, psychic espionage point of view, some of the guys who were involved in the remote viewing program in the 1970s, including Joseph McMonigle, says in his autobiography that he had a, a reptile stood in his kitchen, and uh, he um, you know it was like some out of airplane where the guy goes to the fridge and there's a horse sat at the table, that famous clip in airplane. It's like something like that, and he walks back out again. And I have to say from my experiences that there is a, a subconscious realm or a conscious realm that dates back to two, it's hard to take in, but I think it dates back to prehistoric times uh, where that biology and all that consciousness has continued to this day. That's my, that's my actual you, take on it. You're speaking of the reptilian here. Yeah, I'm speaking yeah. Of, of, how it, of how it actually works. So it might not necessarily be a reptilian as in a giant lizard stood in front of you, but it is a form of consciousness. It is a form of reality that is, um, that is still present um, to to this day and um, it's it's interesting to say the least if you met an alien who uh, was in a UFO from a from another planet and knew his stuff uh, they'd probably tell you that as well because you know the precision of the, the precision biological engineering of the dinosaurs um, at some point some of them must have learned to walk and talk and at some point that that biology has been swept under the carpet but is still here um, and its presence is felt in the symbolism that we see for example in the 
the city of London and in other in other places. Um, interesting, and I could be wrong, uh, and you might know more than me on it, right? But, but it seems to be. I'm, I'm basing this on the on the references of my experiences. You know, where well, where these, there are people that I've talked to and mm. who are close to me that have had very direct experiences, and in, in some cases, what they've indicated to me is that these are in fact um, uh, interdimensional creatures as well. They are, yes. Yes, and they're not short on humour either. Uh, they're, they're, they're quite <laughs> One amusing. would hope not. No, no. In, my, in the course of my experiences, they're quite amusing uh, to um, they're quite amusing to reveal what they are, you know, and, and where they've come from, mm -hmm. type of thing. It's it's unbelievable. It's a black comedy, frankly, uh, you know. So you know, coping with that, him going out the pub and saying I don't know, and uh, and all let's go, you know, and all this kind of thing, being followed again. I, I mean, followed by you know, followed by somebody else who uh, who had a foreign accent. And that was all very bizarre as well. And I'm known as attorney, but she said, "See you later, Anthony." You know, in some bizarre foreign voice, which was, um, and I mean, she was like Tigger. She was like on heat. I don't know what the bloody hell the feather on, but she was bounding about in this, <laughs> this bizarre, absolutely bizarre. And you do wonder, Randy. You do if you think, "What am I looking at there?" Really, you know, what is going on? Yeah, there? what the hell really? is that? What the hell mm -hmm. is that? You know, and and it's it. It's bizarre, but, and, and so you know these these incidents of mind control being followed, uh, being awoken at all hours takes its toll on you, uh, because you've you've breached, you've probably breached the reality of the uh, of the matrix of uh, of the human um, you know of human society. You've suddenly breached. You've some some things happened to you, and uh, you're not quite sure what's um, what's gone on, and and that can relate to time travel as well, and all the all the other stuff that goes with it. You know, it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, but the thing is, though, it does, it does take its toll on you. I am suffering, suffering from it. Uh, it's certainly taken its toll on me. It's not funny, Randy, being awoken at three and four in the morning by strange goings on, in uh, bombarding the epicenter of your mind uh, by a technology that you don't understand. And if it is a brain epilepsy, and if it is something that is kind of like uh, some sort of human disease, then the uh, then the complexity of what is going on to generate sound effects to precision and precise reality, uh, precise inner reality revolving in your head with, with technology, is uh, th th that must be a staggering feat of nature, Randy. Do you get me drift? Oh, absolutely. And, mm. and the, the issue with this is that there has been a long campaign to attribute the experiences of people who are reporting this phenomena as some form of mental illness. The problem yeah. with that lies in the fact that people who have people who live oceans away from each other, people who have no cultural commonality, people from different walks of life are reporting experiences in much the same way that you are, both publicly yeah. and privately. And I can't tell you how many conversations I have with people that are reporting the kind of phenomena that you're talking about, Tony. Yeah, but this is this is absolutely correct. You see, and so you start going, you start looking at this thing that's coming at you within the framework of the inner landscape of the mind, and you start re you start getting sensitive to it. It's a, quite amazing. You start watching it and observing it and trying to find out what it is, and then you realise that it's giving off a signature, it's giving off a feeling, it's giving off an instinct. It's uh, it's uh, present. It's there. It, 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 what is it? What are you looking at? really kind of thing is is the thing and what you in some cases what you are looking at is a very very ancient force that has been around us for a very long time um, and you see this brings us very nicely indeed up to uh, the US intelligence and its discovery in 1950 via Nick Redfern's excellent work, the Collins Elite, yes, yes, uh, of, the, uh, of the intrusion of non-human entity into this mental component uh, of the UFO phenomenon that the American government is fully aware of and its Department of Defense is aware of. Uh, and I was aware of it before reading the research. I twigged on this. Uh, and the reason why I twigged on this was due to a book uh, by Linda Howe called High Strangers, Volume 1, uh, where she'd been approached or of colleague of hers, but I think it was Linda had been approached by two agents from the Department of Defense who was um, 
they, I, I can't remember what they were commenting on, but I think they were commenting on on something she'd written, and they were more or less saying that they had uh, they had studied this and concluded that non-human entities uh, were a root cause of of the problems of these problems that you've just commented on, Randy. Um, and they were also commenting further that they'd they'd studied the physics of uh, wholeness and the implicate order as a, as a real yardstick. That David Bombs right, wholeness right, yeah. and the implicate order. Yeah. Uh, they seem to use this as the yardstick. Uh, as to what was going on. Uh, and so, uh, during the 1950s, as I think I'm going into a bit of Nick Redfern stuff here. Yeah, no, go ahead yeah. and cover that. Yeah. It's important yeah. because... It's important, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well uh, obviously, during, during the 1950s, therefore, the Americans were, uh, American intelligence was absolutely baffled as to why UFOs had suddenly started to come in into their airspace. Uh, this was actually known as the UFO Air War, UFO Air War of 1950. Yes. Uh, and it's documented uh, quite fully in an excellent book called Shoot Them Down by Frank Faschino. Um, and um, obviously, that they, some elements within the Air Force and the Army and the CIA uh, wanted to know what the cause of this was. And they Actually, uh, they reached this conclusion that somebody somewhere had possibly opened a portal, a gateway, to uh, actually let them in uh, via occult means. Um, and so what they did is they studied that, uh, which is, and they formed something called the Collins Elite, which is related to uh, a state in New York that makes cheese. And they consulted vicars, they consulted anybody they could uh, in order to understand what exactly was going on. Um, what fascinates me is they pinned it down to a rocket scientist, as I understand, according to Nick's research, uh, who was causing all this via his rituals. Um, you know, and Collins Elite to this day, for the rumor mill is said, uh, goes, uh, question, uh, will approach the police and so on and so forth, uh, questioning the nature of ritual murder and all this kind of thing and what was, what was going on and whether it's related to UFOs or not. And, and, and obviously I'd emailed Nick because I, you know, I, w I was researching it as well and, uh, he, he'd come up with this thing called the, the Collins Elite. And what is fascinating is there's this reference to Loftus Boat, this continuous code word. So in in majestic Say that majestic. very slowly, the yeah, last word of that. L Loftus Boat. What is the last word? How is it spelled? Uh, boat is spelled B-O-A-T. Okay. All right. And it, it seems to be uh, a code word within the framework of the Collins elite who only had one British member. They only had one British member. The rest was, uh, was American. But it seems to be a code word, Loftus Boat, as to the reference possibly to the, to the man in charge and what he was thinking at the time when, uh, when all this was going on. Loftus Boat thinks this. Loftus Boat considers that. Um, and definitely what they were dealing with, it would appear, is they were dealing with some kind of breach within the within the human biological collective mental framework subconscious some kind of breach was coming in that was ill and you see Randy from a military intelligence point of view I would assume that uh, if you're looking at an invading force coming in but is unknown um, you're not going to see them with UFOs and lasers tearing up the street they're a lot cleverer than that they're going to come in via the human mind which has no firewall they're going to come in via that direction and I think these were the obvious conclusions that they uh, that they were certainly reaching. And they, what is staggering about all this is that they um, they thought, according to the Department of Defence, in the ongoing battle with them, that their technology was pretty strange and pretty advanced. What mm -hmm. they were dealing with, mm -hmm. they couldn't quite work it out. And uh, at one point, they were given the impression uh, that they were winning, when in fact uh, it was done all intentionally. But I think that what they'd stumbled across was a very very ancient force that been around us for a very long time uh, and I think if you look at the excellent work of a researcher that I think you know, and maybe a friend of yours I've spoken to him, Robert Stanley I think you're familiar, is it Robert I am Stanley? familiar with Bob yeah, Stanley Rob, yes. Bob Stanley, yeah, well he, he you know he, he's really looked at this and the, uh, the occult and I think all the stuff that goes on with Washington uh, and what you've got is you've got a scenario going on where you've obviously got a virus inside the machine uh, of the human collective and these people who are turning up at these uh, that these kind of rituals and gatherings and worshipping symbolism and the symbolism in the pop industry and all that kind of thing relates to an overruling intelligence that has been around mankind for a very long time and you will probably read that in any UFO books but E.T. does refer to them as the ancient ones as if we are ruled by the ancient ones and there seems to be this how they, the question is not that they exist but for me the question is how the hell did they get here uh, how
how and why is the, is, is the question. Well, some you know. people have called them interdimensionals and, and, yes. and, and insist that, in fact, they've always been here, yes. and, in fact, they are, are, are hidden from view. And there's yes. <laughs> interesting data I have I gotten just the last couple of days on some things that are going on around the Marianas Trench and the fact that there's a whole flotilla of submarines out there and it seems to be connected to a structure that is either to be submerged or already has been submerged within the trench. Now, nothing human can withstand the Marianas Trench. It's seven miles deep. The pressure Mm. crushes anything Mm. human. Yes. including our, our best subs right now. So the question is, you know, is there something inside the Earth, and what is it, and where is it coming from? Yeah, it, and, and that is the question. Because you, you see, when you look at it, when you, then, when you then piece it together, what you've got is the scenario of you've got visiting higher ET intelligences, then you've got the, the issue of non-human entities, and then you've then got the issue of uh, Germany and Antarctica after World War Two, yes, causing uh, causing a bit of mayhem as well. Uh, and these are the things within the UFO phenomena that are the kind of the the things that government get jumpy about, especially Antarctica and what went on there and the non-human entities uh, in terms of UFOs and what they are. And, and as a result, I don't know whether you would agree with this, Randy. As a result of that, we've now got a shadow government who probably shoots down anything that moves that resembles a UFO, causing no end of, I don't know, further confusion uh, and chaos. Well, the weird thing know? about this, Tony, is they seem to know more than they let on. Yes. They seem to almost, in some cases, be complicit with some faction, and yet at the same time, they keep the public completely in the dark about this. I interviewed um, Commander Bob Dean, who's very well known in the UFO circles, yeah, top low, yeah. about three years ago and Bob Dean told me flat out yes there are extraterrestrials as he turned them here not only are they here but he said they are inside the Pentagon now Bob Dean is very credible he's considered to be one of the earliest disclosers having come out of a you know pretty high military rank mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Dean's telling me yeah they're, they're inside the Pentagon yes yeah that's it his famous quotation is it from the NATO document the assessment yes is that you would uh, you would walk down the you would walk past one down the street and you would never know you would literally never know uh, or you would sit next to one on an airplane and you wouldn't know uh, and that's very correct as well that's that, that, that's very correct I mean the, the bizarre Incidents in London of the uh, of the special boat squadron uh, within Britain. Uh, and I read it on the internet an account of uh, one of the special boat squadron guys going to arrest uh, something like that, uh, apprehending some some of them on the tube on the London Underground network. Some bizarre individuals who they uh, and obviously that all went hush hush. But it's I don't know whether that's true, but it's just one of the many examples, isn't it, of the they look like us. And therefore, when I'm being followed like I was, I had to ask, what am I looking? at really you, you know what I'm saying what, what am I really looking at here um, it's all very interesting isn't it how it, uh, how it all pins to uh, how it all pins together it, it, it certainly is and I think that humanity is caught in the uh, in the middle of it from what I understand from my own eating experiences um, they tell me that there is uh, that there are a number of governments on this planet that are talking to them all but there are strict protocols involved in communicating with them um, that's just an insight that I learned whether it's true I don't know but there seems to be strict what those protocols can be I have no idea but there, there seem to be strict protocols but as you say uh, yes there is an element of these ETs that are possibly involved within the government or within an element of the government that are speaking to each other and developing technology um, and the human race is left in the dark and you get these people that you're going to disclose your disclose it disclose it well, not failing to realise that one of the most important equations is the aliens are possibly also part of the prevention of disclosure process as well uh, and I think that will be very correct based on the, what we've just spoken about you know hey, our, our connections getting uh, fuzzy for some reason Tony um, I don't know what's going on <laughs> can you hear me now is that, is that alright can you hear me 
Yeah, it either is a bad connection unless you've got a microphone connection that may be faulty. Right. I, I, no, I think we're okay. I think we're all right here. There's nothing in the Okay. To just what we may want to do is disconnect, and I'll have you call back in because uh, the line got really fuzzy again. Very good. All okay. Right, so you want to disconnect and call back in? Yes. Yes, please. And I'll, I'll, we'll just we'll go to music here. Very good. Okay. We'll do. Well, that's interesting. The connections are not uh, real good. Considering we do shows from Europe and Australia, that's pretty bizarre. Okay. So we'll bring you back up with Tony here in a second. We'll get the phone line cleaned up. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> and um, Tony, you're back as well. Oh, marvelous. I think you can hear me okay now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so much to talk about, isn't there? So much to cover. Um, it's, just, it's just unbelievable the amount of uh, the amount of stuff that's um, that's out there, isn't it? Just just absolutely un- unbelievable in terms of, of, of trying to piece it all together in your own way as well. Uh, you know, as a as an individual well, person. This is the great um, mystery that we're tasked with. I think um, every person who is investigating this honestly and to be to be fair there's a fair amount of disinformation out there there's a lot of insincere people that are doing this work but anybody that's looking at this and you said it earlier we don't know exactly what all of it is we're putting clues together as we go and it's very telling because the experiencers the people who have undergone this a lot of times are just searching they want to yes. know what is this phenomena, where did it come from, yes. and more importantly, why are we involved in this? Yes. And if you look at your early experience, and it's very similar in some ways, in some ways it's not, every case is different. You were very young when you began to experience this. And in a way, it feels to me like certain souls came into this life tagged yes yeah that that's absolutely correct and and you know it, it's interesting because um you know i was I, I was attacked twice by um by two ufos uh, there was i mean uh, there was a, there was an incident that happened in a farmer's field uh, where the things uh, where the things looking at me hovering in the middle of this field like mm-hmm. a dot of light hovering in the middle of this field just looking at me and it looked like a gunfight at the OK Corral uh, and I thought to myself you know that this thing's gonna gonna attack uh, and it certainly did it certainly did something and then flew off uh, did it, 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 I'll never forget it uh, it wasn't very pleasant and then it just flew on its way uh, and the same thing happened uh, about a year later coming back from a night shift uh, and I think that was New Year's Day I think that was New Year's Day morning coming back from a night shift from where I was working uh, came in over the roof and uh, the, you know the, the whole school started vibrating it was, I thought it was going to knock me to the ground and this gauntlet uh, it, 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 you know it's very odd you've got this with me you've got this gauntlet that you're running all the time of this negative force this this element this hostile element of constantly harrying constantly and I concluded after seeing the UFO that had illuminated the TV antenna that these dots of light that were harrying me um, it was like uh, watching a nature program on the telly because in some cases this, this UFO that illuminated the TV aerial um, I've actually seen different types of UFO that shoo these dots of light away just shoo them off uh, and you're thinking what what are you observing there it's like looking at a reality that that is completely uh, we are completely oblivious to uh, that's going on in the skies around us even even your air force the, the u.s air force is considered one of the most powerful military apparatus in the world but i don't i really don't think they've got anything that can uh, that can match some of the technology that they're uh, that they're using at the moment uh, into these ufo um individuals and, and i know 
over my experiences over the years that the ETs behind the UFOs are very concerned over the nuclear issue and very concerned over what we would do with their technology. It's like having giving toys to children. Uh, their technology works entirely differently to what um, to what ours does in many different ways. And um, it's, it's you know in a lot of cases from from some of the interviews I've read, even Philip Corso said that he, it was beyond his comprehension. Um, just unbelievable, isn't it? I, I, are you familiar with the Carrot Report? Say that again, because we're still getting a terrible are you signal. Getting, are you getting this terrible signal from me? Can you hear me okay? You now you're clear again. You're clear. That's very odd. Yeah. I, yeah. What, I wonder what. Yeah. The, 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 have you heard of the Carrot Report? I don't know whether you've. Uh, I you've have, heard of but it. I haven't read that. Yeah, I haven't read it. Okay, but basically, in a nutshell, it's uh, it, what fascinates me is the concept of uh, in, in a computing system we have hardware, um, but but in their system uh, a single letter can also be software and hardware. So if you imagine reading a page on a book, uh, their technology, those letters would actually become hardware as well as software and create function so you've got letters and you see it now where you snap a, a photo of a code on a wall that gives you a load of stuff uh, where, where letters can act as computing functions and hardware uh, I found absolutely amazing in the Calic report it kind of like gives a, a glimpse of what's uh, of what goes on uh, and, and, and I think the other thing we were going to come to was the wing makers when we were going to have a look at that because I thought that was that was very interesting as well regarding the, the technology involved in that You're which talking. is more of a cycling yeah, yeah. Blank slate technology. Yeah, that that yeah. was right because because what what happened to me in all this was was the fact of the matter was and it is a fact that that happened to me was that I was looking at the the wingmakers website. Uh, now I know everything there is to know about it being a hoax, uh, but the thing is, is there's something in it. There's definitely something going on with it that, that is deeper than what it's saying. Uh, it's just it really is. And I remember I started. There's an interview on there. Uh, I think it's interview one by a guy called. Uh, Dr. Uh, Neruda. Yeah, Neruda, yeah. And uh, he's talking about the Cortinium and uh, 15 and uh, and all that kind of thing. And it's it's just it's just very odd. I'd like to share the, the incident uh, with all this, uh, with your listeners, if I may, because uh, it's not something I'm going to talk about. But basically what happened was that with this blank slate technology, I read it, I read all this about it being like you could get into a time, that each event is a timeline intervention point uh, that can be influenced. Uh, it's a signal in time and it actually is if you look at the if you look at Stanford Research Institute's protocol on remote viewing when they develop CRV that's based on the signal from noise kind of thing I don't know if you're familiar with it Randy but it, it, it uses the ideogram yes. where, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the conscious uh, is, is separated from signal from noise um, and this is this is this, this was very interesting in a few paragraphs he was explaining in a very advanced remote viewing technology whereby anything in the future is signaling is signaling on a timeline you'll hear that signal coming back to you what happens if you have the ability to influence that signal and change its structure which is what he was talking about um, and what is amazing about it for example is that therefore um, you could influence one event but it would generate another so you could influence uh, somebody um, being what's the word I'm looking for you could influence somebody uh, being uh, prevented from having a car accident yes uh, uh, but the blood, but because of your influence in that event, another accident occurs where right, a man this crashes is, yeah. back into a lamppost. Yeah, this goes into remote influencing and yes. cascading event timelines. It does indeed. It certainly does. And, and, and that, that this is, appears to be what, what's happened. So I, I started larking about with it. I started having a, having a play with it. Um, I start, There was one incident that happened where the town was going to flood with a, with a river. As, as bizarre and surreal as this may seem, uh, this town that I was in Selby, there was a chance it was going to flood and the, the river was going to come over. Um, and I started larking about with all this um, with, with, with blank slate in that, you know, if the, if the incidence of the river is uh, flooding this town is a signal, a convergence, a manifested biological signal on a timeline, then it can be influenced and erased or swept off a timeline and moved somewhere else. Um, and so that's what, we, that's what it did and the town didn't flood. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's clever. So I just started larking around with it, having no idea what I was obviously doing. And there were consequences. There were consequences. Now, the fascinating part of this story is this. I can't say what I did, but I did something with it that was very irresponsible. 
I was I was projecting something I knew I, I just knew what I was doing with it I don't know why I knew but I did uh, and, it, and it ended up with something happening that, that shouldn't have happened as a result of that I was at work one evening and I got an anonymous text message uh, around an anonymous text message on my mobile phone telling me precisely what I'd done and not to do it again thank you which was absolutely just surreal surreal uh, it, it really was unbelievable it, so somebody somewhere w w knew exactly what I was doing and they stated what I'd done and said please could you please could you not do it again thank you which is just <laughs> surreal, you know, uh, and, and that, that, that actually that actually happened to me, uh, and it um, it was bizarre. So there's something within this little interview to do with uh, wingmakers and BST. There's something in it, and, and as you say, it is about remote influencing of events. Change one event, however, and this is the thing that I discovered as well. Change one event, and uh, another event happens in a different way. Um, but it's, uh, gee whiz. Well, I don't know how familiar you are with. With um, uh, the channeled material that came out in the 70s by Jane Roberts called the Seth material. But in, in the Seth material, um, Seth talked about this and about the fact that every decision is like a decision tree. If you know how a decision tree works, it's sort of like logic programming in yep. computer software. Uh, every decision branches off into another decision tree, hence, you generate more potentialities, more limitations, depending on how you choose things. Seth said that everything that can happen does happen. It happens multidimensionally and across a span of what we call time, but it actually isn't time. It's actually sequence in a continuum. So yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very important point you've made. Yeah, yes, it is, Randy. Yeah. So what you're talking about is the bleed over of other we call them timelines it's probably the best we can do in understanding what's happening uh, specifically with remote influencing and where you are exerting influence on external events but it seems as though whatever occurs there is psychic pressure that's a poor term too it's going to squirt out somewhere else yeah, this is absolutely right. So, so you know, for all you know, you know, you influence something. Let's say uh, preventing an incident somewhere, and some alien in some backyard planet suddenly gets the incident manifest in front of them, or it happens within their environment in a different way. Uh, and this, this is obviously the thing that these guys were uh, were writing about. It's very subtle. I don't know what your opinion is on the uh, on the wingmakers, uh, Randy. Well, I've, I, there's I, something yeah. in it. Uh, yeah. I've interviewed Mark Campbell, who is the kind of the front man for wingmakers mm -hmm. james who is the creator of wingmakers is for the most part anonymous he's done one interview with mark back in 2008 mm -hmm. i've interviewed mark twice and we've gone pretty deep into the material like i said to you privately the wingmakers material is categorized as a, as a mythology yeah the mythology is a composite and so people read this and they have to understand that it is exactly what James describes as encoded material. It's designed to transmit information, and according to the legend of the Wingmakers, the winger, Wingmakers are basically us in the future. Mm -hmm. So it is us communicating to us across what we call a timeline, but again, it's part of a continuum. You know, and this is the part, that, because here's the thing, Tony, all of us have been trained by our education system, by our culture, to be literal and to be empirical in data. This does not serve us well in the realm of inquiry that we're doing. And that is part of what the wingmakers attempts to communicate, is that there is an encoded stream of data that comes in forms that the human can absorb, and part of that is in a story which you would think of as fiction. But fiction is actually simply a device to communicate data to bypass the logical process of the brain. 
very true indeed, isn't it? I think that's very. I think that's accurately summed up what the uh, what the wing makers is all is all about. And I'd be very interested to understand the the you know the UFO contact experiences of James because he's he really is some. Oh, else. trust me, I've tried. I would love you know, and this yeah. was my initial contact with Mark Campbell was. Yes. Can I please interview this guy? What yeah. I do understand about the Doctor Neruda material is that it is based on actual events it has to do with the black operations here in the United States and what happened after the discovery of a trove of artifacts out in the desert but it's but so so is that right so it, it, it's not so much a hoax it's actually based on uh, on actual events is it well Which some of it comes dangerously close to actually revealing certain names including the original name of Dr Naruto was Dr Anderson and um, yes, Anderson yeah, yeah and anybody who's familiar with the work of another Dr Anderson who's detailed in uh, <clears throat> some of the books by I'm trying uh, I'm not the Montauk guy, his name just slipped my head. He, know wrote, what you mean. he wrote a book called uh, Transylvania Sun, Sun, Sunrise. Right. And he details the work about this Dr. Anderson who works in the area of time travel or time yeah. control, as Dr. Anderson calls it. So there are details within this that are encoded that may, in fact, be very factual, but obviously designed to protect those involved with the projects. Yeah, well, this, is, this is absolutely it, you see. And the thing is, with the time travel issue, is that you're now getting into a realm where, whereby uh, on this signal line that we're talking about, I know Joe McNaughnick will dig a book, did a book called Remote Viewing Time Machine, where he's, he's re- remote viewing a timeline into the future and it's coming back. Uh, and this is precisely with some of us what is uh, what is going on. Uh, and I, I think, uh, Randy, this is, this is famous. Are you familiar with the story of Alec Newell? Uh, at all uh, and his abduction experience I'm not no you're not okay well there's a story regarding it well Alec Newell was harassed hey Tony your your sound's getting fuzzy again are you close to your microphone uh, no I'm not actually I'm just is that any better yeah, try it now. Is, is that better for you? I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, we may have to disconnect again. We actually have an hour break coming up, so maybe what we can do is try one more time with a connection or we'll work something else out. Why don't you hold that story over? We'll take a break here and uh, play a little bit of music, let everybody, uh, including me, take a short break, and we'll try and get the sound cleaned up because uh, I... It, I suspect that tonight was going to be a difficult interview, and it has um, fully lived up to all my expectations. So, <laughs> with that said, we're going to take a break on this side, and uh, when we come back on the other side, we'll pick up the, the the details. There's a lot of things that we're going to talk about in the next hour. We'll go as long as it's fun and it's interesting, and we still have energy. We'll be right back. After this brief break, this is Off Planet Radio Live, Hour 1 for April 24th, 2013. We'll be right back.
Ecology is under stress as never before. Environmental hazards, genetically modified foods, toxins in the earth and air, chemtrails, and escalating radiation levels. How do we get control? Thanks to the work of a team of researchers, we are pleased to announce a revolutionary natural technology that can help your body rebuild its original coating. RNA Drops is a complete formula based on the newly discovered iCell. RNA is the building block of DNA. These new DNA structures are the gateway to what is called ascension. Many users of the RNA drops have discovered the benefits of a product as unique as their own biology, finding newfound well-being, peace of mind, and a sense of control over their destiny. Like me, they are enjoying a sense of empowerment within their own bodies and emotions. To get all the details on RNA drops and to find out how, you can obtain a free mini bottle. Go to RNAgenesis.com. That's RNAgenesis.com. Take that music down. Well, the people on the on the on the archives won't hear it. Uh, that was Tool, No Quarter. I know it's heavy metal, but uh, indulge me. You'll get heavy metal, hip hop, new age, just about anything. I feel like whipping out of the can on the breaks. Welcome to Off Planet Radio Live um, again, April. April 24th, gosh, I forgot what date it was. I'm, I'm having time slippage here. And um, very interesting show tonight. Um, we're suffering the ravages of technical deficiency, interference, and thank you to those on the chat room. Thank you to those listening. Thank you for sending us energy. We needed it. There is this whole thing that people are talking about now, and it's coming from all over the place about this energy thing um people go through periods of just almost complete collapse energetically and i think some of this has to do with what i guess we would call the shift or the um the collapse of certain paradigms that are going on right now and our own biology responding to energetics that are entering the the planet uh all, all the things that we're talking about tonight and uh i apologize for the technical side of it i think we've got a good connection now and let's not waste it let's bring back for another hour my guest from the uk tony topping tony welcome back hello there can you hear me okay now you're perfect it's, it's that's wonderful. delightful to finally be able we were garbly we were scratchy we were staticky it was all over the place and i want to back up a little bit to where we were when we left off on the second half was there anything you wanted to reprise on what we were talking about is, is there anything sorry Randy, i just missed what you said is no, there anything? I, I said did we conclude what you were talking about because yeah, we, we, what we were going to go into was uh, was alec newold uh, a man who was abducted in New Perfect. Zealand uh, and, and what happened with him was it, basically it's a similar sort of thing whereby he got harassed as well um, and what, basically he's driving down the road in Auckland uh, and next minute he knows he thinks he's in a car crash and he's got he's floating out of his body and he's got two ghostly figures coming towards him he's in another environment and he thinks oh what's going on here except they weren't ghosts they were actually aliens and they'd actually uh, they'd actually taken him for 10 days uh, they'd abducted him in his book Coevolution. 
Co-Evolution, his book is called. Uh, and what is interesting is when he when he came back, what seemed to be a couple of minutes being away uh, was actually ten days. He'd been away for ten days and had no account of it um, as to what had gone on. So with that, the next minute he knows, he gets a knock at the door from the, uh, from of all places, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, mm-hmm. and, and also, which isn't probably surprising, and also the Australian uh, Defence Research um, people, uh, wanting to confiscate his car because it had gone, it had been subjected to very high voltage and they wanted to uh, take his car uh, away. He refused, and he ended up uh, being harassed and all sorts happening to him. And that was to do with the fact that he'd been in contact with a, a multi, kind of a dimensional um, alien uh, species mm-hmm. whose uh, ability, whose technology had failed them, and they were having to become more like us. And, and this, it's, it's all very interesting. What is interesting about this is in terms of the the fact that he's obviously and this happened in my experiences as well and it relates to time travel in a rudimentary way because what, what's happened is he's obviously been taken into this environment and it's taken me 30 years of experiences to fathom out that the environment you're taken into crosses into the human afterlife and then into another realm which is uh, completely their realm in another dimension not just another planet but another dimension right. and then you're and then you're placed back again in our time frame and in our realm and it, I think in, in the case of what's happened here what happens there is that you're moved across into another dimension that is forward in time from where from where I'm saying it's in a very rudimentary way from where you are at the moment so technically speaking you've time travel because they're further into the future than, than we are. Yes. And then yes. you put back again. As a result of that, you've probably travelled along a timeline where you've you've passed human historical events and history and therefore you then start getting an echo coming back at you from the future. An echo just coming back at you, a bit like Joe McNamagle in his room up you in Time Machine book, uh, like a time echo coming back that is, uh, that's from the human kind of um, collective. Uh, and that's very interesting how that how that meshes with the concept of BST and time travel? That information I've, I've said, but you probably wouldn't read it in any um, in any book. Um, but the future is within the human race's presence, even though it's not happened yet. It Absolutely. seems to be happening all the yes. time. Yes. You, you'd concur. Yeah, it, it seems to be happening all the time. Um, and it's interesting to to say the least. The the road that we are going down um, is a very hazardous one as a as a collective race of human beings. Um, we could be in very deep uh, in very deep trouble. And I I do conclude. I don't know what you think, Randy, about this. America is. Um, one of the most fascist nations would you describe it as a fascist state <laughs> you wouldn't Absolutely. You? yeah it's and frightening yeah, it's, it's frightening how frightening. fascist it's become um, and this overlaps as well into obviously World War II what happened there with the development of technology under the Third Reich how that yes. migrated into both our, both of our countries as well because yes. we have to remember that the UK and the US are linked in ways that well I believe a Prime Minister of Great Britain called it a special relationship. I believe that was Margaret, yes, the late Margaret. It was. Thatcher. It was indeed. And that and special thing. relationship has to do with the linkages and alliances politically, militarily, and economically as well. Yes. But there's the, the, the dark side of that is that there are occult connections and those occult connections bleed over or are direct linkages as well into the things that we're talking about tonight all of this yes. is on the table Yes, yeah, you, you, that's a very perceptive, one of the most perceptive comments I've heard on the whole issue of what is going on, because that's precisely what's happening. There's like a harmonic bleed over of this ancient force. Uh, they're all stood there worshipping it, doing what they're doing, their ridiculous bloody rituals, having no idea of the, the, the harmonics and the absolute interference and chaos that it's all causing. And it's very similar to the scenario in The Matrix where, uh, you know, 
know, Neo uh, confronts the machine or goes to the heart of the machine and says, mm-hmm. you've got a virus in the system, you've got to sort it out, and the machine goes, why should I listen to you? Because that's what's happening, and there is. There is a virus in the, in the system that's currently being generated at the moment, and if we don't watch it, America will, will, will end up in a, in a conflict, in a conflict uh, whereby we're building nuclear shelters again if we're not careful. Uh, and it's, uh, I think that this country has a peculiar date with destiny with all this well, it, it, yeah. you, you mentioned something earlier in our conversation and, and you just linked into it again the nuclear thing Yeah, we know and there's a Time magazine cover out there somewhere that actually shows this the explosion of an atomic device creates a rip into yes. the what do we want to call it uh, yeah, probably the many levels but this 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 rip that occurs actually ripples out into other worlds it does yes it, and it seems, yeah. it has been the concern of beings who have been in contact with us that this is a major concern they cannot allow us to continue to be nuclear Hmm. and there it seems to be this like tenuous thing that happens where we have been withheld um, but at the same time the threat still looms and it seems like now and I I throw another log on the fire and that's that's Fukushima or as we call it Nukushima and what happened there because it seems now that the nuclear uh, threat has gone to ground zero in terms of what's happening with nuclear plants as well so we have real issues with this nation which now is marauding around the globe basically bullying and and killing people on a mass scale i mean as an american i'm horrified by what my country has become in my lifetime i'm deeply concerned about what's going on within our borders but also what it has gone on in other nations so i mean these are all connected because if we go back and we study the third reich tony you know they were occultists you know that they were looking for the mojo to make world domination happen and we know that hitler at the same time was developing technology that probably is part of what we now see brought into our current military hardware Yes, uh, I know yeah, there's a whole yes. cluster of yeah. things there. Just yeah. go at yeah. it. Yeah, no, well, no, no. I mean, this is absolutely this, this is absolutely correct that, 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 that America does have a shadow government. Um, it is what it's looking at. We we've no idea, but the occult connections to it all are, are certainly bleeding over into our uh, into our society, and they will carry they will carry consequences. The thing is, is that your defense secretary Chuck Hagel is he called? Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. yeah? yeah. yeah. I, 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 I can't remember the quote verbatim but he drops a hint uh, I think about all this uh, that, that more or less saying that the that I don't know whether it's correct that the current administration can't seem uh, seems to be aware of this uh, and it cannot trust any data that it's being presented with about anything at the moment uh, because of these agendas that are going on uh, making obviously making as you say America become a, a warlike marauder uh, bombing innocent people you know uh, it is just absolutely horrendous what's going on in your country and I have a love of the American people I think they have a, a, a zest for life and an interest for life and a, you know and it's 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 a shame what what's happening in your uh, in your country and oddly enough India has its own uh, military industrial complex oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, which is have, an I mean, extension of both the well, British Empire and American it, technology it, it, as well off. yeah I mean that they're basically on the ancient uh, Vietnamese don't they where they uh, I mean their, their Prime Minister India Gandhi said that uh, India India will uh, look at all the ancient technology that is there and put it into its military industrial complex um, you know and so the, the question I ask is if if your country's intelligence community were analyzing this in 1950 and reached conclusions that you're reaching and I'm reaching and another research Nick Redfern has reached what's yes. going on now what's currently happening at the uh, at this moment in time you had all the remote viewing projects in your Stargate grill flame the mysterious gondola wish to which nobody 
everybody seems to, to know precisely what, what that project was all about and a few others uh, scan it whatever that's just what we're seeing in the mainstream public but what really what what's really the project going on there with all that what have they really discovered is is the interesting um, is the interesting key to it all and it makes you wonder if you're na- if you're behind the scenes if your nation's uh, intelligence agencies and establishment is at war is at civil war with each other uh, with all this which I think is a possibility oh, very much so now we've, yeah. we've we've talked about this before uh, mm. there's a, there's there's clearly a schism there's clearly a shadow government there are mm. clearly people within the government who are mm. infiltrators of the shadow government mm. who are attempting to either limit or neutralize the actions of the shadow government that is mm. the delicate balance of this country right now mm. and there are people inside the government who know that at the highest levels they have they have access to technology they have access to intelligences they have access to powers which have been conjured and brought into existence which are the horrors that we're talking about the the mass murders the killings the wars the pedophilia and everything else that's going on that are are the 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 really just horrendous side of, of of human nature it, well, this is absolutely right, and non, uh, I think uh, you'll find with the uh, non covers it up better than the Brits when it comes to the old paedophilia stuff and all that kind of thing. Uh, you know, we're pretty good at it, as you saw with the uh, with the Savile scandal. Yeah, yeah. Let's That's talk it. about that a little. Yeah, a little bit. yeah. Mm-hmm. Certainly so. Because Savile, yeah, it's interesting how this all came out after Savile had passed on. And it picked up some momentum in the press in the UK. It bled over here a little bit, but not much. But it it looked for a while like perhaps they were going to pursue this to where we would actually be able to get in a full-scale investigation. That's not happened. Is that correct, Tony? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. In fact, the the officer concerned who went on TV and said, uh, don't sleep in your beds at night, we're coming for you, be very worried, uh, has now been taken off the case and has got a desk job somewhere, uh, which is bound to happen because they're not going... When you get to the real uh, substance, what 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 what's happening at the moment is they're going for famous people. Uh, aren't they? They, 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 I don't know what you've not noticed in the UK media, but they're actually going for famous people. Yes. Uh, when in fact the people that you're talking about, am I ta- and I'm talking about from our own research, are highly dangerous men and women, very clever, not prone to mistakes, and cover their tracks well, uh, and make other people scapegoats. And you know, you're probably talking the. You'd probably need to go after the, after them with the aggression of. Mos- sad to uh, to to actually hit them because they their laws they don't they they don't abide by the police the copper knocking at the door coming to question them it's not going to happen uh, it's not the way they work uh, probably controversial but it's just not the way they work it's not the way they rule they're, they're clever <laughs> yeah. uh, they're, they're also abhorrent uh, pieces of work um, and it and it goes on and it's it's very very sickening there's an MP in the UK called Tom Watson who uh, who wrote who kind of like brought this up in our parliament regarding the fact that there was a, a paedophile ring mm-hmm. going on mm-hmm. uh, and he's been threatened uh, in fact in, in Victoria there's a place called Pimlico uh, and that relates to its reason why it's called Pimlico as I understand is because uh, because of the, the rent boys and the, the pimps that, uh, that go on and you know as a victim of abuse myself uh, this absolutely horrifying uh, what you uh, what is being uh, read about in the UK media horrifying how they just blatantly cover it up um, as if we are, we're all stupid well, over here. I believe you know? uh, I believe that some of the uh, facts that have leaked out that I guess we can call them facts. There certainly at least testimony links pedophilia and murder, basically snuffing of victims, back to even the late Prime Minister Harold Wilson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it it it, it, it certainly uh, it certainly does. It is alleged that Ted Heath was involved with it. It yeah. is alleged, yeah. uh, and, the, and I don't know, but it is alleged that uh, that Margaret Thatcher was aware of of it. So some researchers say. Well, I've uh, I've gone so far as to say that 
here in the United States, I've said this is how business gets done at the top tiers of power. Um, we had a scandal here with Penn State University, which is very close to where I live here, which took down um, the head of the university, the f- head football coach, a uh, nationally recognized head football coach, Joe Paterno, as a result of activities that went on with one of his assistant coaches. But what most people don't realize is this wasn't a blip on the map. This literally is an ongoing situation because of how deeply ingrained it is into the power structure. Most people cannot still grasp the idea that something this hideous is actually a normal yes. part of life for the elites. Yes, it, it is indeed, and and you see at the at the end of the day, uh, it's a very a very perceptive remark that you make when you've said this is how business gets done because it is. It is how business gets done uh, with them. There's no getting away with it. Uh, that this is what's happening um, at, at the moment. And of course, you've got that ceremony, haven't you, uh, Moloch? Uh, you know, and the uh, which I think Ale- I love him or hate him. Alex Jones did that thing, didn't yeah, he? Where he, yeah, got, he got, yeah. you know, and uh, and, you, and you've got that. And then you've got the the guys who are interviewed on camera about it getting very very jumpy when uh, and breaking out in a sweat when questioned about what was going on there at this retreat. Um, you know, and it's all part of what you're talking about, Randy. It's all part of the harmonic bleed over into our reality as human beings. It's all part of this crazy, insane harmonic bleed over that's happening, and we need to get a grip because it's not just a, an issue of business getting done, as far as I'm concerned. It's an issue of national security uh, in terms of, let's say, Britain and America, where where this has just got to simply stop. Um, and you know, I think as a, as a person who's who's had a who's been in um, had abuse happen uh, you always have a radar for such individuals uh, you just do you just develop a radar a sixth sense for, oh, yeah. for such no, people no. Don't you? you know that you know, yes yes you certainly do and uh, it's it's and what happened in the UK with Savile is, is, is just probably the, the tip of the iceberg there was this issue with Newsnight as well over here uh, Newsnight is meant to be our flagship uh, journalist program with the BBC and uh, what happened uh, they uh, they claimed so it is said that a wealthy, I think he was a wealthy lord uh, called McAlpine, uh, he never really. Newsnight never said that he'd actually done anything, but all of a sudden uh, he had, they had lawyers on top of them, heads rolled at the BBC over it, um, and it was you know it was pretty uh, pretty nasty for the Newsnight team. Uh, even one of the key presenters, a guy called Jeremy Paxman, said that the uh, the BBC management should have stood its ground, uh, but that didn't quite happen. Um, oddly enough, I've got a thing going on with the BBC at the moment where they've defamed me on camera, uh, and they've come out with the old chest well you signed a contract tough uh, and it's absolutely hilarious because we have over in this in this country uh, an organisation called Ofcom which is the equivalent of the FCC and uh, what Ofcom do is they do something called a preliminary view uh, which is a view of the uh, of the complaint I have made and a view of what the broadcaster is saying in response to that complaint mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and their, their response as I've told them so is just totally biased towards the broadcaster and, and the thing is is that you've got you've got in this report that Ofcom have done uh, it's as if I've shot John F. Kennedy the way they're carrying on uh, you know we were looking at conspiracies regarding 7-7 seven, seven. Uh, and like you said at the beginning uh, the Boston thing there's some sinister modus operandis that keep cropping up uh, much as I'd like to say that it you know it's uh, it's uh, an incident plain and simple there's these odd modus operandis that keep cropping up in any of these incidents uh, that I find disturbing well just start with the yeah. dates you always see the patterns and Yes. You know, I haven't written about Boston just because after Sandy Hook here last year, I mm-hmm. was excruciating doing the research and writing about it. I mean, it takes, you know, endless hours to write, but writing is really just the mechanics of the thinking process. Mm-hmm. But in terms of Boston and uh, what's going on there, uh, again, you, you're looking at occult dates. You have particular patterns that pop up. You have little mysterious hooks that kind of come into play with it. They're signatures, and I call them spiritual signatures, because there's an element of the demonic that falls into all of this, that once you begin to train yourself to understand it, you start seeing it all over the place, in large events and small. Have you 
kind of notice these patterns as well, Tony? Yes, that's precisely what's going on. Uh, that, is, that is precisely what's happening. Uh, and the thing is, is that you've got to have a trained eye to notice it. And it comes from years of experience. It's not the realization of this is not given to you on a plate overnight. It comes from years of experience and observation of watching the goon squad in question. You know what you're talking about, and I know what I'm talking about. And it's time that you're, you know, it is time the United States got a grip of its uh, of its security uh, regarding all this, because I, I do think it's a national security threat to my nation and uh, and your nation. And yes, you can't help, uh, therefore, but think uh, that um, there are occult connotations as to what happened. Who was the guy on the roof, by the way? Uh, the, the media in the UK don't seem to have um, done anything to do with this guy on the roof when the bomb went off. There was a guy on the roof. I don't know. Did you notice that? Do you... Have you seen I've it? heard this, yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's a, in the Daily Telegraph here in the UK. But see, it's book. not playing here in the United States. What's playing here in the United States, so you get a different... It's really interesting. We now live in the age of the Internet, so we do have a bit more free flow of information if we mm. look at the way foreign coverage is handled. Mm. In this case, that particular item gets no play. What gets play is the FBI identifying the two... Um, I guess, Russian, nominally Chechen brothers whom they've identified as the culprits. Mm. And now the ramp up to justice, because they've already been judged, so it really doesn't matter. One of them's dead, the other one's in the hospital. And basically, um, the laws in the U.S., the anti-terrorist laws, basically state that these guys will never see a trial. Anyway, so, no, that news doesn't play here. There were anomalies on the ground from the minute this thing hit. I just, I very rarely watch TV and I almost never watch news. Randomly, because I was home that day, I turn my TV on and I see this live coverage and I start watching it. The number of federal agents that they had on the ground and the number of agencies that were there and the earliest reports from Boston tell me everything was prepositioned that this was basically all set up. And it's like I said in my monologue at the beginning of the show, these people were not here to protect us. They were there to pull another op just like they did at Sandy Hook, just like they did in Aurora, Colorado, and everywhere else that we've had some type of violent assault on civilians. You, yes, and, and what, is, what is baffling about this, Randy, in terms of your country, uh, what, what is baffling about this is you have 35 intelligence agencies or thereabouts, all with different names. None of them, you have drones, you have surveillance, you have the National Security Agency, one of the high-tech agencies, um, and, it's, uh, and then you have all these laws, TSA everywhere, yet still an event like that happens and will continue to happen and all the agencies look round baffled because as you rightly said there is a hidden component element to it uh, and it will continue unless they get a grip of it uh, it certainly, it, it certainly will. I, I, I don't. And, and all, all, but you see, there was a commentator on your uh, in the um, in the UK media. He was from the US. He was on Five Live, more or less saying that um, you know after what's happened at Boston, uh, it is fair to say that we need now to have our freedoms slightly taken away from us in for our protection. What the hell's that all about? Well, there isn't a hell of a lot of freedom left to take. Exactly. What they're going to do is they're going to—they've militarized our police here. Right. Um, they have turned our airports into security zones so strict that the air travel is now just completely excruciating. Um, we're seeing it on the local level as well with you know the way the police are responding to civilians. There's a sense of oppression in this country right now that is quite palpable and quite remarkable. I don't remember anything like it in my lifetime. So the country itself is going into lockdown. And you mentioned the drones. Well, I think this was probably a pretext for positioning the drones because there's been a lot of pushback. But Boston certainly makes the case that now we need surveillance. We need intervention from the air. Um, your guy on the roof, well, the drone could have taken them out. And so every time that one of these run, one of these ops, we lose a little bit more. They didn't get the gun control they wanted after the Sandy Hook incident. So now there needed to be another incident, another way to create the pretext for more control. 
It, it does seem to be the case, uh, Randy, but do you think that this is an element, a rogue element within the, the US administration that is causing this, or do you do you think that Obama literally oh, sits this is down the with the power his structure. This is it, the power structure now. But Obama is part of the rogue, and I can say this categorically, mm -hmm. because I know people who knew Obama mm -hmm. when he was Barry Satoro. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to, um, we have, um, I've interviewed uh, a witness named Andrew Basciago, who was part of a project in the United States in the 1970s called Pegasus, mm. which had to do with basically jump rooms, and eventually it had to do with jump rooms to Mars under the aegis of the U.S. military. Mm. Andrew Basciago and one of his other... Um, one of the other people who has come out as being part of this project said that Barry Sotero was in this project. Mm -hmm. Barry Sotero was basically a guy who was completely for himself, completely controlled by his handlers, and that because of what they were using in terms of technology, a piece of equipment called a chronovisor, they actually knew who the next U.S. presidents would be going back to at least uh, George Bush forward. So they knew that the the two Bushes, Clinton, Sotero, a.k.a. Obama, were going to be president. All of this was prepositioned. Mm, I understand really that you, if you have not heard these stories, mm. um, that requires a, a bit of suspension of belief, but I've done a lot of research on this. Andrew Basciago is an attorney, right. and he's rather well-known and rather well-respected. So mm. we take these stories, and the U.S. presidents that we've had are prepositioned. They are part of what would have been considered the black government, which mm. is now like a cancer, almost completely taken over the United mm. States. The, the worry is, uh, Randy, from I your I feel point like you're interviewing me. This is fine. I am. Yes, I am, actually. Yes, I am. Sorry. Because <laughs> the, 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 worry, the, the worry is, um, obviously, the worry is with your country that's meant to be land of the free, uh, and, the, and with my country, the worry is this, is that when these incidents start to happen, I noticed, uh, very much so, uh, the media in which it was leaning, leaning towards the fact that perhaps somebody like you, Randy, or somebody like me are a terrorist, and we've got to watch, you know, we're the people to watch. So that one minute it was Al-Qaeda, the next minute it's the Muslims, and then it suddenly escalates and ramps up to the ordinary man in the street. And it's something that we have to uh, furiously guard against in this country as well, um, where we, you know, where we have to defend our, our free freedom. Uh, free speech um, and that seems to be what's happening I noticed that in the media that the, the, the American media anyway were gearing up for this assault on, on people who had an alternative point of view or, or a critical thinking of the world view around them are suddenly then labelled extremists or terrorists and it's wrong by doing what we're doing on this show and the shows that you appear on um, mm. we are at least putting ourselves out there uh, I have to assume that because of the way communications are monitored mm. universally, that I show up on somebody's map somewhere, mm. some red list. You know, honestly, at the end of the day, if that concerns you, then you probably shouldn't do this kind of thing. Mm. I take the position that I'm looking for the truth and I'm not going to give up until I find it and mm. there's a cost to that. Mm. It, it, it's, it's actually an observation of what your media was doing during the incident uh, apart from one guy on CNN who said that uh, we can't really go down this road of, uh, it seems to be a dangerous uh, in other words as you have rightly said uh, you're getting your freedom erased bit by bit by bit very subtle uh, but what is the end game you just, you know, I'm just not sure what the, what the end game is with it all you know? it's, it's absolutely uh, just unbelievable as to, as to where they could be leading to with all this and that's the bit that I'm not sure of. Uh, I really am not. Well, I know that the observations that I hear from my friends in Europe are that they are appalled looking at the United States and seeing what the mm. American people have tolerated so far. Mm. 
Um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Even if you took all the events of 9-11 as the way they were presented as true, even if you took mm-hmm. any of these incidences mm-hmm. as they were presented as true, it is mm-hmm. not a pretext for taking away rights which were not given to us by our government in the first place. Our founding documents said we hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> just the issue. These rights came to us as a part of God, natural law, whatever you want to call it. We're that is inherently the free beings. Yes, that, that, is, that, is the, that is the absolute issue, uh, that, that really is. And I think the other thing as well, uh, Randy, over here in the UK, we have the Magna Carta. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we're having at the moment, uh, where, you know, free, free men on the land and all that kind of thing. But when you look at the UK government, for example, if you look at it as the, uh, as the actions of a corporation uh, rather than a government, you then, it all suddenly fits into place as to what they're doing. They're, they're acting as a corporation for the, uh, for the private banks. And it, it fits into place very nicely as to what they're doing, and you tend to then perceive it all very differently. But as you say all the time, when these incidents happen, there's always the, the subtle erosion of freedom, the subtle uh, yanking up of the control over people for some bizarre reason. And, it, uh, as you, and, and Alex Jones, uh, much as I um, have reservations about him, he appeared on the Piers Morgan show, made an idiot of himself, <laughs> because his, his most crucial issue was this, uh, and he didn't talk about it either, was, okay, gun control, yeah, fine. But they weren't just doing gun control, were they, Randy? They were actually altering the Second Amendment uh, in, with unconnected things. That I'd really had no, I may have got this wrong. This is what I was picking up in the UK anyway. Um, th- they were altering the, the Second Amendment, so it, it had a broader remit, a broader level of erosion, as it were. Right. Well, the right to yeah. bear arms has always been contested on certain wording within the amendment itself, which had to do with militias, a word that they do not like in this country, but in fact, <laughs> whether they like it or not, there are militias here, and they may in fact be the gray line between all of us. One of the listeners in the chat room pointed something out here, and it was they basically asked me to ask you if you're aware of the Georgia Guidestones. Yes, uh, yeah, actually, we, we went a bit off piece, didn't we? We've gone into the realm of, but yeah, yes, I am aware of it. That's okay, it's, it's, it's all right, yeah, is that all right? Yeah, well, yeah, the Georgia Guidestones, yes, I am aware of it, and I find it a very sinister uh, piece of, um, what's the word we're looking for? Statue, isn't it? I, I just find it very sinister. A uh, guy walks into the, the stonemasons, doesn't he? He says, can you do this for us? And they come out with it, and they've got these uh, little commandments on it. Very sinister, frankly, and all part of the harmonic bleeder over what we're, we're talking about, all connected, all interconnected to it, isn't it? Well, it has to do with eugenics, and it has it to does. do with the elimination of massive numbers of people to yes. turn to rewild the earth, basically. Yes. Your country intellectually kind of developed that idea to a high degree. The intellectuals in your country developed eugenics, and we have exported this now as an idea. There's a lot of deception about things like global warming, overpopulation, they're misreporting numbers, they're skewing data to make it appear as though humans are simply fleas on the back of Mother Earth, and that's not to take anything away from the planet. But... To go back to your original question, the reason why you're concerned about the United States is because traditionally we were viewed as a bulwark of freedom and now we're the opposite of that. This opens the door to what could become global genocide. It will affect every nation on this planet. Yes, yes. This is the linchpin. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, your, I think, you, in, in other words, your country does hold the linchpin uh, to all this. It certainly does. It has a date, peculiar date with destiny. It, um, it, it certainly does. And uh, I, I just, I just don't know where it's going to go in the uh, in the long term. We're, we're getting echoes of a, on a timeline. Uh, where I, I hear, we, in my position, I hear things all the time about what could possibly be or not be, uh, and it's just simply not good. It, it really, really isn't good. And it's talk been, to me about that. A little bit yeah, the yeah. on the timeline, and yeah, you yeah. know what? As long, like I said, we'll go as long as it's interesting. And to me, we're having a great conversation, so I'm not looking at the clock. But right. let's talk about this: the echoes and the timelines a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what we've, what, what you've got going on there, for example, is the, is the bizarre. It's not bizarre. That's the wrong word. Well, I'm saying it's bizarre because I find it bizarre. But perhaps in my framework of experiences, it probably isn't that bizarre. <laughs> but what you've got, what you've got going on there is you've got kind of like uh, a possibility that there is a, uh, a 
a person in the supermarket, for example, walk down, walk down the supermarket, and now won't just you'll hear an individual, but there's a possibility that that individual who you who, who you're hearing in the in the ether, uh, you're not just hearing them in the present, you're hearing them in the future as to what they could be and where they're going. Um, it's a very interesting uh, concept of of what's happening, and it, it, you kind of like you hear this when you've been displaced into another dimension, and then put back again. Mm-hmm. You're hearing you're hearing time coming back at you as to what events might happen or what events may not happen. And, and it's peculiar in terms of America because there is this. These ETs are, are definitely concerned over the nuclear issue, and they're definitely concerned over the activities of China, which has concealed itself very well as to what it's actually up to. Um, and it seems to me that uh, there's a possibility you're going to have a woman president as well. Uh, that seems to be on the cards from all I'm <laughs> all I'm picking up. But the the nuclear issue is is definitely is definitely present with them, uh, and they keep they keep referring referring to this constantly to the point where it's now scaring me um, I, I've had over the past three weeks uh, it, it all being ramped up the stuff to do with the ET stuff they've kept very quiet over the years they've stepped back they've not they've not said much they've let me be battered from pillar to post uh, but over the last three weeks they've just stepped in and they've stated what was uh, what was going on and that, that's kind of like it's just very bizarre because you, you, you're in you're in an environment that is not the human and dream world when we go to sleep we dream uh, and we, we have these dreams and we may have nightmares and stuff like that but I actually believe that in some cases some of us are involved in their dream world in their environment in their inception which is separate to the human race and it can bleed over and uh, you know when you're in that environment there's some there's, you just know about it you know about it if, a, um, if one of these aliens comes up I mean they look like us uh, some of them actually look like because except their uh, then they're, they're kind of like their nasal structure and forehead structure is slightly mm-hmm, different, mm-hmm. Um, and their their understanding. I mean, for example, you know, I was I was deeply relaxed the other day into many levels. I was I was fast asleep, and I was I was deeply I, I was just sent deeper and deeper into this um, relaxation level, and um, I came face to face with with somebody who who was definitely uh, an ET um, who explained. You know that there was a nuclear issue going on, and that the the fact that the uh, the natives were playing with toys was one of the things that, that they, they've come out with, uh, whereby they're, they're they're observing that we're larking about with technology that really is lethal, uh, and one of the key things that they come out with is that the nuclear bomb shouldn't really have been invented, um, in our hands anyway. You know, so over these past three weeks, I've I've been exposed to uh, to all kinds of, of of strange goings on where they've just ramped up. Uh, what they are and who they are, or, or one of them has, one of these groups has. Uh, you know, they're very ancient. They've been around a long time, mm-hmm. uh, and, and their population level is about is only very small. Uh, in some cases, you're talking about a planet with about two thousand, three thousand of them on. Uh, in some cases, and, and it's all, it's just, it can get a bit, um, get a bit too much, and you wonder who is friend and who is foe with uh, with all this. Are we agreed that there are both benevolent and malevolent forces out there that are involved in all of this? Yeah, yeah, I think we are. We're, 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 well, that, that is the total conclusion I have made. I know Dr. Stephen Greer, who, who is a man I, uh, who I actually admire because of mm-hmm. work in the disclosure thing. He had a very interesting run-in with, uh, with those two at Project Camelot who don't touch me with a barge call. I don't think you're a fan of them. Um, uh, he had a... He had, <laughs> you he, um, think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's true, is it? Right, sorry, yeah, I heard the rumor. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. basically, in a, in a nutshell, they, Dr. Greer said that there's no hostile aliens at all. Uh, that doesn't happen. And unfortunately, it does well, uh, happen. Well, in all fairness, in that particular dialogue, yeah. this was the two extremes of the polls. I did not yeah. agree with his summary. On the yes. other hand, Project Camelot has been exploiting hostile alien thesis fear porn for as long as they've been around and, and Carrie has continued to do that. So you you had you had two polar opposites when in fact I believe based on everything that I know, everything that I've heard, the people I've spoken to is that there is somewhat of a balance here because there are benevolence and there are evil and we have to understand this game from that particular perspective and then be- begin to discern who's who. 
Yeah, well, well, well th- th- this is this is absolutely uh, absolutely correct, and it would appear that some of us as human beings are are actually involved in this game for reasons that we don't understand. We're not given any information as to why, and we we, yeah. we go on, you know, we go on to the dangerous obsession path as well. I mean, I became obsessed with filming UFOs, and I've filmed quite a few of them. Um, and I became absolutely obsessed with going out, going out and filming them, uh, and to no avail. W- w- th- there was nothing productive coming from it. It was just an absolute waste of uh, waste of time. And so, not only is this this, this polarity there of good and evil um, with them, there's also this cost, this price on one's life, where you can't seem to live a normal life because of it all. You're walking around in a shattered state all the time, uh, and you know you're on your own. There's nobody else that's willing to. Uh, you know, that's willing to actually help you. It's, it's, it's. It can get all very uh, heavy going, and I just feel that at the moment there's still this this total sense of lack of direction. I mean, you know, I can uh, only this morning, and I can't even remember what it was about. That it was happening again this morning, where I'm asleep, but yet something else is going on, and you wake up from it, Randy, absolutely shattered. You don't know where you are with it, yeah. Um, yeah. and 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 it's because it's not you they're interested in I don't think it's me that's sat here now speaking that they're possibly interested in I think it's something else that they're interested in and that takes a lot of working out as well so you've got all this kind of you're trying to suss out this massive landscape uh, of data that's coming at you that is not human that the government says doesn't exist you're, in, you're, accu- you're accused of being a nutter um, and that the gauntlet is, uh, is run uh, and then you've got strange people following you which is which and, and these are kind of like it's just insane and no man should be really subjected to this like I've been I mean the the, the psychotronic weapons that they, they were using I mean in in 19 was it January 2001 round about three in the morning you know I was hit hard uh, I thought I wouldn't wake up the next day I thought I thought I'd probably die right because I was hit hard with this bizarre Hitchcock style stabbing into the center of the uh, into the center of the forehead mm-hmm. and what's even more mm-hmm. sinister. Yep. What's even yeah. What's even more yep. sinister about it is the is the ability for them to keep you asleep, uh, and the ability for for your awareness to. Um, to bizarrely enjoy what's going on because they've got so much control of your brain, so that they've got the pleasure centres activated while they're whacking you good and hard with this with this Hitchcock style stamming. But and I strongly believe that part of this experimentation that went on was to do with with development of a weapons platform. I think whoever they were were developing, and I think that the the UFO stuff was an incidental sideline and the possibility they were developing some bizarre weapons platform uh, that's out there at the moment, and that a serious. Ethical now, when you say they, t- Tony, can can you narrow that down a little bit to just <sighs> who you suspect? There's some, there's some form of of classified agency out there that is involved in the uh, okay. is involved in the matters uh, that you've stated. Uh, that's definitely going going off piste. Uh, is completely off its loco and is doing stuff that it shouldn't be doing. And th- th- they all spoke English, apart from uh, one woman who spoke with a slight foreign accent. But I think you're looking at a cabal of individuals um, who have been tracking me very, very closely. But I think, uh, Randy, that they got out of their depth with me. Because when you've got these UFOs coming over, uh, they don't mess about. Their technology is very advanced. And I think that the people who targeted me have, uh, are, uh, became out of their depth with me and backed away. Uh, because they suddenly realized that I was somebody else's commodity, somebody else's breeding stock, somebody else's whatever. I am uh, that didn't belong to them and I think that hint has been given and I do think that whoever these people are are fully aware of the UFO situation and have been for centuries I don't think it's a new thing with them it's just that it's all kept quiet and I think that the the ETs uh, are involved in the silence as well of it Uh, so when we go on about disclosure we have to put into the equation that there's a possibility that there are elements of extraterrestrials that may be involved in the UFO cover up as well don't want human beings to know that they actually exist for whatever reason that may be 
That's, that was that was pretty. <laughs> that yeah. was a pretty comprehensive statement, actually, Tony. <laughs> um, it it lines up with you know pretty much what I believe as well. It, you know, it, it, the, the, we do have to hold that there's a complicity. There's no reason to believe that our government has the ability on their own to suppress the knowledge of extraterrestrial beings if those beings themselves wish to make themselves known on a grand scale. Yeah, yeah, this is this is absolutely. I mean, I I know for example there was somebody who came up to me at a UFO conference who said that she was involved with, uh, had been involved with the British Civil Service um, at some point, and she would she was retired. She was a charming woman. She said, uh, "I don't want to talk about what I know because I'm happily retired." She says, uh, "And if I do talk about what I know." I'll start getting the heat like you're having heat, she said. But I will tell you this. She said, the, the, the government department I worked in became very, very concerned about cattle mutilations mm -hmm. and what was going on with them, and we were very concerned about that. And with that, she bid me farewell and wandered off. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's that incident as well of the unmarked helicopters and cattle mutilations that are uh, currently going on at the moment. And that's the other thing that we, you've got. You're painting a whole landscape here, aren't you, of... Uh, of issues and problems to which the human race appear to be uh, in the middle of, uh, but yet strangely don't acknowledge. Um, and it's it's distinctly sinister. I'm not sure who is responsible for the cattle mutilations, but it does seem to cause great concern uh, within within the framework of government in general. Yeah, th that's really an X factor in all of this because it was so prevalent here in the U.S. for so long. It's mm -hmm. really not talked about a whole lot now it was it was a hot topic for a while in ufology but it hasn't been revisited it's almost become like a sort of silenced subject yeah, yeah, well, well, well yeah, yes in, indeed and, and then there's the other thing as well to do with this harmonic bleed over and these, these sinister forces that are out there because I know of a man who works in NASA um, I don't know him personally but um, I, I know of a man who, who is a NASA scientist and he's very well known and he was working on on uh, on propulsion calculations uh, on behalf of uh, well he, he, I don't know what it was on behalf of but he was actually working on propulsion calculations and he started uh, he started having extraterrestrial contact experiences he awoke in his room to discover two ET stood there showing him a star map uh, and he couldn't quite believe it. And he's a he's a prominent NASA scientist. And and with the, and then then what happened then is that he started going. He, he was driving down the road with his girlfriend, and the UFO was parked to the left. Uh, do you know who this guy is? Without saying too much, do you I have an idea? Do not. You do not. Right. Okay. Uh, and and so um, you know. So what what happened was he was working on these propulsion calculations. He was stuck on them, uh, and he was helped by his encounters uh, to re to revise the calculations. The book is published. He has a major website, um, but nothing at all about his... If you can send me those links at some point, I'd like to see that. It yeah, can be yeah. something that's just not on my radar. Uh, it's, it won't be on your radar at the moment, but the thing is, the thing is, is because of these forces, what we're talking about, Randy, what you've so, so rightly talked about, uh, he can't speak. He can't actually speak because, as he has rightly said, there are, there are forces there uh, that are keeping this all with the lid firmly on, and they're in esoteric uh, forces and you know he had to change it he was interviewed by Whitley Stryber and he had to change his voice uh, and oddly enough it was his it was a relative who sent me an email for some bizarre reason saying yeah he's uh, he is um what is it? He's my sister's boyfriend. He said in this email, and uh, he's so and so, Mr. So and so. Wow. Uh, and sure enough, he was. Uh, you know, and um, I, yeah, I don't think it's safe to, to be widely known who he is. Uh, but yeah, definitely so. And it's on my YouTube channel, Tony Ops UFO, the actual interview with him and what he what he went through. Uh, but he's quite happy to be part of the scientific establishment. He made, he made no bones about it. Uh, he was quite happy to be part of that. And and these are these interesting developments. That, that kind of like crop up when you realise that on my Facebook page, for example, I've got people following me from various aerospace companies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
uh, aerospace and defence companies. Yes, uh, I'm you sure say, you do. Yeah, well, well, yes, well, well, you say I'm sure you do, but I, when I first saw that, I go, oh, what was that about? Oh, well, that would make sense. Well, when you start pulling IP addresses off your website and you see the intelligence agencies and defence contractors who are looking at your website, China Lake, <laughs> Lake particularly China Lake Naval Facility, uh, seems to seem to have been in the old days. It seemed to hit quite a lot, did that? And and it, it was it was interesting to uh, to note that there's a possibility that some of these guys uh, have also had UFO encounters and are keeping it quiet as well. It's as if in some cases the genuine contact bypassing all this crap and bleed over um, these genuine contact encounters are actually ongoing and they're very selective as to who they're speaking to I would suggest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. certainly food for thought the silence behind this in the general public is what we're, we're battling. We're battling the science. This is the great taboo, talking about this subject. You know, mm -hmm. many, many years ago, it would have been in the Victorian era something sexual. Um, mm -hmm. There's always been societal taboos. This is the societal taboo now to talk mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. and why it's important and why people who come on shows like this, people like you, bring their testimony forward is because each time we put that data out there, we put it into the information stream and we encourage other people who have similar experiences to come forward and talk about it. And that's what needs to happen. We have to get a critical mass of people who are willing to identify as experiencers and who are willing to share their experiences and stop the silence because that's what they fear. Yeah, that, well, you, you, you are quite correct. I mean, I, I've no idea what would happen if this man declared his hand, um, you know, in, in public. Well, I guarantee it. you his life is at stake. Before he ever yeah. spoke, he would be, yes. you know, he'd have an accident. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And this is the this is the gauntlet that you're uh, that, that you're running, and I think it's 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 heading for a uh, it's heading for disaster. And I I, I really well, uh, and you know not only that, Tony, the difficulty in that we've had in this conversation tonight is with concepts that kind of escape verbal description anymore because we're talking about events we're talking about phenomena that really isn't part of the common language so how do you describe it how do you yeah, describe multi-dimensional how do you de describe bleed throughs and yet yes. we're going through this whole period of time here where the energetics and the earth are changing where things are shifting and there's a window of opportunity to begin to somehow communicate this. I think yeah. that's why the internet was created, frankly. Yeah, well, well, indeed, isn't it? Because it always fascinates me regarding the Wingmakers, where the the Wingmakers website, where they comment on the internet being a kind of gateway, yeah. uh, something a bit bigger. I just find the concept of that absolutely fascinating. Well, and it was 1998 when they went live with the first yes. website. And of course, yes. it's changed over the years a lot, but yes. that was cutting, that was bleeding edge at the time. Yes, it was. It, 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 it certainly was. It, it certainly was bleeding edge at the time. And uh, there's something more to it than meets the eye. For me. Here oh, in the yeah. UK, it's <laughs> it's just coming up to uh, ten past four. I, I'm I'm tired out now. My energy's going absolutely. Um, yeah, um, and, um, but it's been you know it's been an absolute blast. I don't know whether anybody in the chat room would like to ask any questions with your permission, Randy. I don't know whether you do that. Do you want to oh, hear? No, no, no. I put field out for questions constantly. Yep. There was one question, and it was, uh, are you? Do you know Nigel Kerner? Yes, I do. Okay. I know his work, familiar with his work, yes. Yes, we've done extensive interviews with Nigel and his associates here, and they just wanted to know what you thought about Nigel's work, which is basically I, I, grey aliens and the harvesting yes, of souls. Yes, indeed. I, I never, ever uh, have come across a grey in all my experiences. I've come across uh, Nordics, redheads, all that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. never, ever have I seen a grey in 30 years of doing this. Interesting. Which is incredible, isn't it? But no, but his first book was super. I've not read his second, but I enjoyed his first book very much. Yes. Really did. Uh, and he, he's, he's a bit of a lone wolf as well, because the mainstream UFO community in Britain don't really deal with him either. In fact, you know, they, they don't, and it's a shame, really, because I think he's got a lot to say. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of, kind of scanning the chat room to see if there's any out, anything else. Any other questions you guys want to get? Sometimes we do call-ins, but lately yeah. we've been getting a lot of phone activity, and we had 
troublesome Skype line tonight. Listen, Tony, I know it's four in the morning for you. It's getting late here. I really appreciate you staying up early and and talking to us over here. Um, did you get your website situation straight? Yeah, I'm going to get that sorted out by the uh, by the weekend. It's to do oh. seemingly with uh, with with demands of money from oh, various. Oh, of course it is. So, yeah, yes, the usual, yes. the usual. So, uh, but you no, know, I'll, I'll have that sorted by the weekend. Okay, give out your websites, your YouTube, your Facebook, any way okay, that people yeah, can get in touch uh, and on with Facebook, you. Yeah, on Facebook, Facebook, you can find me on Tony Ops UFO. Uh, you can also find me on uh, on my YouTube channel, which is also called Tony Ops UFO. And my main website is TonyTopping.com currently down at the moment that will come back up as tonytopping.net uh, and I do have my own radio show on blog talk that deals with current affairs uh, UFOs the paranormal that's called the Tony Topping Show um, so and I'm also a media contributor within the UK I'm, I'm on quite a bit of media from BBC to ITV I'm on TV and radio a lot really uh, talking about all this which is a good thing and the mainstream media so far have actually treated me very well here in the UK on this subject uh, I've had a good crack of the whip with them, actually. I can't you follow. have, actually, yes. Yes, yeah, it's uh, Mr. Jones and his merry mob at InfoWars who, uh, who censored me rather bizarrely. <laughs> uh, but there you go, you know, you live and learn. They don't, don't want to deal yeah. with this subject. That's a no, stretch they, they can't take. Tony, yeah. all this information uh, goes out on the websites over the weekend. Sorry, folks, I can't get up faster than that. Offplanetradio.com, offplanetradio.net. You can find the interview there to listen to it again. All the links will be with it. I want to say thanks to you, Tony. Stay on the line for a minute. I'll close the show out. Will do. Yep, will do. Next week, uh, coming up, we will have with us Chris Carter. And uh, he's somewhere in the Pacific Rim, I believe, in Taiwan. We'll be talking to him. Science and the Afterlife Experience. Evidence for the Immortality of Consciousness. Again, digging deep into the spiritual side of life. We'll be back again with another show next week. I'm Randy Moggins. This is Off Planet Radio. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Keep looking for it.